So in this video, we're going to show you how to mount a vise onto the base plate of your MR1 milling machine. Uh, before we jump into that, I want to spend a little bit of time to talk about this particular vise that I've got setting on the base plate. This is uh, the vise that we sell on our website. This is the 10 inch modular vise. We've designed this uh, purposefully um, to take advantage of um, MR1 specific design. Uh, primarily, it's got really long or really wide jaw-to-jaw um, -jaw opening. This will be able to clamp on a part that's uh, over 10 inches uh, long. And also, it's um, a very, very short vise. So it's only slightly more than one inch above the base plate. You know, we said before, we've got about 9.2 inches of um, clearance between the spindle nose and the base plate. And to just try to maximize or take as much use, make as much use out of that, uh, clearance as possible um, really depends on having a very low profile vise uh, such as this one. Uh, these are really, really accurate vices. Every surface on these is precision ground. Um, you know, really, really good performance out of these vices. Uh, really, really able to hold tight tolerances with them. Uh, they come with a um, spring loaded uh, rear jaw on the, or sorry, front jaw on the moving um, side of the vise. And it's located in a uh, wedge so that when you clamp down onto a part, this moving jaw will actually drive down and it'll push your uh, part against your parallels or blocks or whatever you, whatever you have loaded on the uh, bottom of the vise. Um, also on the table, we've got the tools that are used to operate this vise. So one, you have a handle that's used to turn the screw, the clamping screw, and that, that moves the jaw in and out. And then you also have an Allen wrench, and that's used to basically uh, drop the ball detent that is inside of this uh, block down into the um, hemispherical uh, counterbores on the, on, in between the, or in the valley of the vise. And so what happens is that's how you're able to move the, the position or the, the course position of the moving jaw to clamp on um, different length parts. So, Basically, the way you, you would use these is you feel when the ball is dropping into one of the holes, such as right there, and once it's into one of the holes, you would tighten it, and then you can move this in and out. When you're ready to clamp onto a part that's um, either much shorter or much longer, you would simply loosen the bolt up, and then you can slide it to any other position that you would want. Um, on the table, we've got the uh, optional vice clamp set that we sell on our website. With this, you, you get six of these clamping blocks and then six cap screws to secure it to the uh, base plate. The way these work is um, the edge of the clamp would rest on the slot that's milled into each side of the vise, and then you would use one of these cap screws to secure it to uh, one of the tooling holes in the base plate. So, you get six total. Typically, you would put you know one on each end and then kind of one in the middle like this, and that really helps to um, really positively secure this vise. As far as loading the vise onto the base plate, there's a couple things that you got to be mindful of. Number one, cleanliness is the most important thing. Before you load any vise or any fixture, for that matter, you want to make sure that your base plate is perfectly clean. You know, use a use a like a lint-free towel to wipe the base plate off, compressed air works good. And then similarly, uh, on the bottom side of your vise, you wanna make sure that that's really, really clean. You know, we went to great lengths to ensure that this base plate is perfectly flat. You know, when we did, when we uh, set the coplanarity of the y-axis rails on um, previous steps, we did that to ensure a perfectly flat base plate so that things like vices will sit down flat and not rock. Um, but all of that is compromised if your base plate is dirty or if it's got a ding or something like that on it. So just make sure you take care of your base plate, make sure you, you make it clean um, before you, you bolt this down. Um, after we get it kind of loosely bolted down with our clamps, uh, we're gonna keep the clamps loose so that we can move the uh, vise back and forth. And then we're gonna use our indicator to basically sweep the, uh, the back jaw and then rotate the uh, vise to make, basically make it so that this back jaw is parallel to, to our x-axis. Uh, once we get that done, then we'll go ahead and tighten up all the bolts, and then we'll be able to actually um, load up a part and start making some cuts on it. So I'll go ahead and uh, get started with uh, clamping this down. 
All right, I've got the uh, vise installed on the base plate. I've got my vise clamp set installed with the cap screws. I've just left the uh, bolts about a half a turn loose for now, so all of these clamps are loose. That'll allow me to essentially um, rotate the vise on the base plate to uh, uh, square up the fixed jaw to the x-axis. Um, I've got my vise all the way over to the left-hand side. That's my preference. I like having my vise over there because it leaves all of this real estate over here for you know, those odds and end jobs that might come up where I've got to you know, toe clamp something down to the base plate to machine on it. Um, alternatively, I can put a second identical vise over here and then I can clamp really long parts. The beautiful thing about these vises is that we control the base height uh, very accurately and you'll also be able to use an indicator to align the back jaws of those two vices so that it's essentially like having one really big uh, vice on the on the table with one really wide jaw. Um, so that works really well. We've got a number of videos on our uh, YouTube channel where we show the use of uh, tool vice, two vices to, to make parts. Um, alternatively, you know, you could elect to put a Saunders machine work vice uh, on this side. We sell lots of different items uh, for the Saunders product line on our website. So uh, be sure to check out our website, read more about um, that, um, that vice. Um, really good design. We really like those on these machines. Um, now, with that being said, before we go ahead and start tramming this vise in, I wanted to bring, um, bring up one thing, and that is, the, as I said before, the, the moving jaw is spring-loaded, and I have to, essentially what happens is there's two screws back here that you have to crack loose from the factory, and that allows the spring-loaded mechanism to work. So I'll see if it's, oh, yeah, so you can see that the moving jaw is able to move up and down. All this, is, all this does is it prevents jaw lift from occurring when you clamp on something. So what jaw lift is, is when I, when I clamp something in and I tighten this screw, what tends to want to happen is the part wants to lift up in the jaw and this mechanism counteracts that so that it'll actually push your part down into the parallels and it'll actually pinch the parallels uh, between your part and the base of the vise and that's, that's what you want. Um, so as far as getting ready to tram this in, so I've got my indicator set up. The base is on the spindle cover with the, and I'm sensing against the face of the fixed jaw. And what I'm going to do is, uh, like as I said before, all these bolts are, are tight. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and snug down that back left bolt. And that way when I go ahead and I make my adjustments, it's going to pivot off of that back bolt and make it a little bit easier to, to perform this uh, tramming operation. So I'll go ahead and tighten that now. I'm not going to get it too tight because I want it to still be able to move okay. Then I'm going to bring the, I'm going to jog this back. And then I'm going to just make sure I'm set to zero. So I am. If you're not set to zero, go ahead and set it to zero now. And I'll probably jog across this at 25 inches a minute, and I'm going to see what my error is here. So this was me just setting the base, setting the vise down onto the base plate, not doing, trying to do any type of alignment at all. And it looks like I've got about a, maybe 12, 11 or 12 thousandths of error there. So what I'm going to do is just use my fist here, and I'm going to bump the, the vise and try to get that to to correct itself. So I'm going to just bump this until I kind of get it back to zero. I'll try there. Now I'm going to sweep back across it. So normally you got to do this a whole bunch of times. I quite frankly just got lucky here. Um, I, you know, I was hitting it with my fist and I looks like I'm almost right on the money there. Let me check it one more time by going across. Okay. Yeah. So that's perfect. We were right on zero all the way across. Um, honestly, you're not going to get that lucky. So you're probably going to have to do this multiple times where you'll You'll sweep it, you'll make a correction, you can use a little mallet to help you out to do that, and then you'll run across it, and you'll probably have less air, sweep it again. It's kind of an iterative process to dial this in. 
Um, but mine's good right here. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all these bolts up. And then one last thing is that you wanna make sure after you tighten the bolts to go ahead and sweep it one more time just to make sure that the act of tightening the bolt didn't inadvertently shift the vise one way or the other. So, um, but I'm, I'm confident that I'll be able to get this uh, cinched down without moving and we'll be able to um, go ahead and move on to the next video, which is where we're gonna load up a part and, and start cutting on it. So if you guys have any questions about this process, uh, feel free to reach out to us, thanks.